What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we have your WWE WrestleMania 38 Night 2 review and results. If you guys missed our coverage of night number one, definitely go check that out on the channel. We broke down all of the action from night one yesterday. Definitely go check that out. But tonight, we are covering night number two, a brand new card of, of talent, a brand new card of wrestling for us tonight. Night one over delivered by a mile. I was not excited going into the show, and they outperformed every aspect. I thought they did a fantastic job. Would number two or night number two live up to that hype man we're gonna dive into it and find the hell out but we're gonna cover the entire show here break down all the action break down every match giving you guys my thoughts opinions and everything in between about the show as a whole so with that being said man let's dive into night number two of wrestlemania 38 and find out what the hell happened so night two's main card started off with the six man or triple threat tag team championship match for the raw tag titles rk bro defending against alpha academy and the street profits now i knew this match would slap i i knew coming in that i was super excited for it i knew that that they were going to bring a lot of high-level athleticism. You got some good workers in here, so I, I was very excited for this matchup, and it delivered on every single level, man. It was super hype. I thought the crowd was super into it. It was a perfect way to start night two of WrestleMania. Just, I think everything that this match was is what the Usos versus Shinsuke wasn't. You know, Rick Boogs and Shinsuke. I know they had the injury, but this one was just a lot better, man. It flowed a lot better. The crowd was into it. Every guy in the match looked like they were having a ton of fun. The selling was incredible. We had some amazing spots. You had the the super RKO off the top row to Montez Ford. We have the like huge blockbuster off the top. We had Montez Ford doing his tope con Hilo over the corner post. I guess since Ricochet wasn't around they had to have somebody do the damn spot. But a huge RKO out of nowhere to Chad Gable and RK Bro retained the tag titles and it was, a, it was a banger. I had a ton of fun watching this matchup. I had to go back and check it out. After the matchup, I think his name's what? Gable Stevenson or whatever. Does get in the ring and he, he slammed Chad Gable. They announced on night one that they signed him and then tonight he gets his kind of like debut here at Wrestlemania or his big moment where he suplexed Chad Gable over his head there and I don't know I'm not fully on board with the guy yet we'll see what comes of it but that was a very good match I was super entertained and we'll see what comes of his career as we progress here but uh, I think he, he he's got to win me over next up guys we have Bobby Lashley taking on Omos a matchup that I was not looking forward to it was better than expected I guess but it still was just very lackadaisical we had some cool moments here and there but it was uh, pretty much a brawl like all over right I mean, it was just in between the ropes. I expected them to get outside the ring. I guess they did one or two times there, but nothing over the top or special, in my opinion. Kind of was eh, you know, I, I wasn't heavily invested in this guy, but at the same time, it was a fun match, what it was. You had like a Harley Quinn kind of gear going on for Bobby Lashley, which was cool. Too bad his next elite is pretty plain Jane. I wish we could have got the white tights or the red tights or something cool, but nonetheless, this match was what it was. I expected Omos to go over here, but Bobby Lashley picks up the big win over Omos. It was pretty much a slow fest you know kind of just you know grappling and kind of just leaning on each other some strikes corner pounds stuff like that so nothing too crazy but Bobby Lashley does pick up a win over Omos which I found to be interesting thought that they were gonna definitely give the nod to Omos here but not my favorite match I feel like it was pretty skippable nothing worthy of note here next up guys we had Sami Zayn taking on Johnny Knoxville in an anything goes match and I gotta say man this matchup was wildly entertaining I don't know who produced this matchup but they did a fantastic job. Like, it was very entertaining. I was laughing throughout. I was engaged throughout. Now, I will say, I'll be the first to tell you. Now, first of all, I do love Johnny Knoxville. Grew up on his stuff, watching Jackass and all everything that he was involved with. I always loved him as an actor, as a performer, as a as an extreme stuntman. Man, I, I was a big Knoxville guy growing up on the Viva La Bam Jackass Wild Boys era. That was me. That's all me right there. Now, I don't like celebrities in wrestling, but this was pretty fun. I, I loved it. Whoever produced this match did a fantastic job between all the spots and how the match flowed and progressed. They did an excellent job here. Now, was it everybody's cup of tea? Absolutely not. Like, do I want this all the time? No. But I think that it delivered what it needed to between the whole feud and how it played out on our TVs. It was very entertaining. It had me engaged. And I thought they did a really good job. We had bowling balls to the nuts. We had a crazy table spot to the outside with mouse traps to Sami Zayn. A giant mouse trap kept Sami Zayn down. We did have interference from Johnny Knoxville's crew. Wee Man and Chris Pontius got involved. Involved. Jeff Tremaine was even involved. It was it was excellent. It was literally beautifully booked. Like, I think they did a fantastic job the whole way through, man. Fire extinguishers. They even used the giant hand from Jackass. It was just such a fun ride. We even had a haluva kick within the first five seconds. So, 
Very fun matchup. Not like everybody's cup of tea. I can't wait to see some other people critique this match, but it did what it was supposed to do, and I think that's really all you can say, man. But this was very engaging and very entertaining. Sami Zayn gets defeated by Johnny Knoxville, man. How wild are the times? I feel like this should have happened in like 05 or 06 or something, but here we are in 2022, and that's what we got, and it was entertaining. Next up, guys, we have the Fatal 4-Way Women's Tag Team Championship match. Natalia and Shayna, Zelina and Carmella, Sasha and Naomi, Rhea, and Liv Morgan. Defending champions coming in are Carmella and Zelina Vega. This matchup was kind of all over the place. There were some entertaining spots here and there, but I felt like it lacked a lot of intensity. It kind of reminded me of the Women's Royal Rumble a little bit where, you know, guys are kind of laying around a little bit. It's not quite, you know, it's not like precise in the movement. There's a lot of lackadaisical stuff going on there, but it was okay. It wasn't a great match. It was just, it, it just didn't deliver, I don't think, uh, in its full capacity. I think the rest of the women's matches on WrestleMania this year were much better than this one. We had some cool gears throughout. I thought that everybody looked pretty good in their gear. I loved Sasha's ombre hair there. Kind of, I mean, her gear kind of looked like this, to be honest with you. Nonetheless, man, it was a, it just, I just think that it lacked the gear. I felt like they should have hit another gear or two. But the good news is, is that Sasha and Naomi are your tag team champions, which I know these belts are kind of, you know, they're, they're pretty useless at this scenario, the way they created them and everything. That's a whole nother spill for it and a whole nother day, to be real with you. But Sasha and Naomi are champions, which which is great to see. I was going for them or Rhea and Liv, but it was nice to see Sasha win here. I want to say this is Sasha's first win at WrestleMania. Am I insane to say that? I don't think it's ridiculous to say that. Nonetheless, man, Sasha and Naomi win the tag titles, and at least we have the championships on some credible foes here. So Sasha and Naomi should be a fun little tag team as we head into the summer. Next up, guys, we had Edge taking on AJ Styles, the matchup that I was probably the most looking forward to the entire weekend. And both of these guys had on some incredible gear. I think that, you know, edges like purple and black dark undertaker-esque really cool gear i thought it looked insane aj styles sick ass white and blue gear was sick i had some tags across social media i always get tickled when you guys do that so that was awesome that gear was really cool i thought that both guys looked awesome i thought the match was awesome i think they did a fantastic job throughout it had me on the edge of my seat the reversals the interactions the near falls that we got in this matchup was crazy what i did not see coming was this ending and at the end now i saw reports of this for a couple weeks now that they were looking to form a faction for Edge. And sure enough, near the end of the matchup, Damian Priest distracts AJ Styles going for the phenomenal form. He gets speared in the middle of the air and Edge defeats AJ Styles 1-2-3 in the middle of the ring to win the matchup over AJ Styles. Crazy. Did not see that coming whatsoever. I thought the match was phenomenal. No pun intended there. Actually, pun intended, absolutely. This was a fun match. This is a great one. I, I love the back and forth that we got. When you have the two workers like Edge and AJ Styles, I mean, what do you expect, man? I say go back and watch this one. Had a very hard-hitting tale. You had both. You had some great psychology between the two back and forth. Just one of those that you got to go back and watch, man. So definitely do yourselves a favor and go back and watch it. But what a fun interaction to see these two. Just such a dream match to see play out at WrestleMania. It had a big feel. The entrances were awesome. Edge's entrance was insane with the pyro, Technics, and the throne. Hell of a lot of fun, man. Definitely go back and check this out. But Edge Edge does win over AJ Styles, which I expected to, to happen. I expected that to take place, and it did. So, you know, I, I was correct in that instance there. But Edge gets the win over AJ Styles. Next up, man, we have the New Day taking on Sheamus, Butch, and Ridge. And this wasn't very much a match, man. I mean, it was high flying. I love that Kofi and Xavier Woods dressed up like Big E to show support for their boy. But uh, this was just throwaway, you know. It was just pretty much throwaway match. Sheamus and Butch and Ridge get a very quick win. I, I want to say it was less than five minutes. It was, I don't know, man. It was pretty despicable given that, you know, these guys didn't get it. Four hours of pre-show and these guys couldn't get a, a freaking match and all the promo packages and the crazy long stuff going on that happened on this show was just insane. But Sheamus and Butch and Ridge win the matchup and pounded New Day. I feel bad for them, but I bet we get Xavier and Kofi in Big E gear as figures. I can go ahead and see that right now, but that that's all I can really say about this one. Next up, guys, this one was insane. We had Austin Theory and Pat McAfee. Now, you guys know I love Pat McAfee. I think he's great. 
But this one was just weird, man. I really don't know what else to say about it. It was a weird one. It was definitely a weird one. The matchup was fun. We had some great moments here and there. Pat McAfee would end up rolling up Austin Theory, but after the matchup was where it got crazy. So Pat McAfee wins. Vince McMahon was next to Austin Theory the whole way through. It was very, uh, it was very cool to see Vince out there. But after the matchup, after McAfee defeated Theory, really cool, like superplex type deal for McAfee in this matchup. But afterwards, Vince McMahon starts talking ish to Pat McAfee, gets in the ring, takes off his jacket and shirt and wrestles Pat McAfee, pretty much buries Pat McAfee, clotheslines and then kicking him and punts a football into him, defeats him one, two, three, and then after the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin's music hits and he comes down to the ring talking all the ish. He hits Theory with a stunner. He hits Vince McMahon with the worst stunner I've ever seen. He celebrates with Pat McAfee and then hits McAfee with a stunner and this thing just went off the rails. It was a crazy scene. I want to say this segment lasted 20, 30 minutes it's long. It was insane. Like, it was just like one cluster dream. Like, it was just a, a fever dream of emotions going on between this whole thing. And it was very odd, man. I don't know what it is, but I took to Twitter about this because I wanted to get this out into the open, but I felt like something was up with this Wrestlemania. I may discuss it at the end of the video again, but in this moment, man, I'm just sitting there watching all these things. Like, Vince McMahon has never done something like this. This show feels different. There's something up. I don't know what it is, but it almost feels like this whole show and this whole weekend has been like one last hoorah. You know what I'm saying? Like, with Austin coming out and just all these crazy things taking place. Vince McMahon getting in the match, getting in the ring, you know, and just all these wacky things going on this weekend. It just felt like a send-off ceremony of some kind, if you get what I mean, right? It just felt something felt off or something... Yeah, I don't know if something's going on in the behind the scenes. I don't know what it is or what's in the air, man, but I'm really feeling it with this show and Vince McMahon and Stone Cold and everything. Like, I don't know what the whole deal is. I have zero expectations. I have zero, like, thoughts on what it could be, actually. But it's just weird. It's a weird vibe that I'm getting. I don't know if it's one last two raw or what the deal is there, but that's just what my vibe was. That's what my vibe was for, throughout this whole segment, but it was very enjoyable throughout. I had a, ton a blast. You know, nostalgia was hitting me. Me, seeing Austin return and get this great moments, man. It was just really cool and this WrestleMania has just had me on a roller coaster of emotions, man. This WrestleMania has honestly blown me away from my expectations, which I told you guys, that's usually what happens. Every time I come into a show with this feeling, it always blows me away, but something is up behind the scenes. At least that's what it feels like with this show, and I guess that remains to be seen, but you guys heard it here first. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below, but this was enjoyable. Stone Cold was awesome. It was a whole deal. And for the main event, the unification match, WWE Universal Championships on the line, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, clashing it all here. Was expecting a lot out of this match to be honest with you was really looking forward to it you know all the history that we got everything leading up to this really enjoyed both characters coming into this matchup it was what it was man it, i mean it was hard hitting it, it looked about like every other brock and roman match you know suplexes superman punches reversals here and there knees to the gut got the corner got the outside spear through the barricade spot as always you know nothing too over the top it was kind of anticlimactic i felt like this match was super anticlimactic it, it that's really all i can say. I felt like it ended abruptly. I thought that they had another 10 minutes left in the tank. I would have liked to have seen a couple more near falls. It just didn't have the drama that I expected. No Uso interference. No Paul Heyman interference to the level that I think it needed. Not enough shenanigans, I think, for to be that WrestleMania moment match. They really could have went over the top with this thing and they decided not to, I guess, which I guess it is what it is, but I really would have liked to have seen more entertainment and more shenanigans through that way. I mean, it was what it was. Roman Reigns wins with a spear. I I mean, that's pretty much what it was. I expected that outcome. I expected Roman Reigns to, you know, win both championships. I didn't see it going any other way. No Dwayne The Rock Johnson after the fact, which I didn't necessarily expect. Just something in the air felt like something big was going to happen after, especially after the anticlimactic match that we had between these two. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. You guys can let me know what you thought of that down in the comment section below. But overall, WrestleMania 38 was good. I enjoyed it. Night 1 and Night 2 had their moments for sure. I liked all the crazy stuff that we got, all the surprises. Not every match was great, and the card wasn't the best, but I think overall it over-exceeded expectations as far as that is concerned. That's a, that's a definite. It exceeded all of my expectations. I wasn't looking forward to this WrestleMania, but they blew me away with everything that they had going on, man. It was really awesome. Night 1 or Night 2, I feel like Night 1 
1 beat Night 2 in terms of quality, but we still had some good stuff on Night 2. But Roman Reigns is your dual champion, undisputed champion, and I just felt like something was going to come out, but it, it never happened, man. But this show was very enjoyable. I think WWE, I don't know if it's the existence of AEW, but WWE did a great job with the show overall. I was thoroughly impressed, had a lot of fun with it, and that's really all I can ask for, man. Having the best of both worlds, loving what AEW is doing, loving what WWE is doing. I mean, that's that's what we love as wrestling fans, and that's what creates that dynamic. And that, like, we're we the fans are who win. So if you're crying about one brand or the other, bro, just give the other one a shot. You know, enjoy both worlds. You can hate what you hate in both brands and love what you love of both brands, and that's really all you can do. But WrestleMania 38 was solid as hell. I had a lot of fun with it, and Roman Reigns is your dual champion. I cannot uh, foresee who's going to dethrone him, man. I, I just don't see it right now. I don't think there's anybody out there. Could it be Cody eventually? I don't know. Could it be Seth Rollins eventually? I don't know. Could it be somebody else that's not on the radar? Could it be a legend of some kind? I don't know, but damn, man. That wraps up WrestleMania weekend. We still have Monday Night Raw, of course, which I may, I may talk about. We'll have to see what happens, but I'm getting the hell out of here, man. I enjoyed WrestleMania 38. I would love to know what your thoughts are on the show. Night 1 and Night 2. Did you like Night 1 or Night 2 better? Do you think something was weird with this show like I did? Let me know down below, but I'm getting out of here, man. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Video. Leave me all your thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys next time. And don't cross the line like I guess Vince McMahon, right? He, he was crossing the line all over the damn place with that terrible-looking stunner. You crossed the line, I've been